Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. On this one, we're going to be doing the I in solid, the interface segregation principle. If you don't know what that means, then I'm going to obviously explain that throughout the video and we get to that in a minute. But before then, there's a few things I'd like to mention. So the first thing I want to mention is last week when I wasn't here, uh, I spent a few of those days working on the community game jam led by uh, Brackies, Blackform Pro, Danny, Jabril, Saiku, and some other uh, people in their community that helped, you know, make it all go smoothly. There was about 6,000 or 7,000 people that took part or said they were going to take part and then uh, there were 1,100 entries in the end. Obviously, it takes a lot of dedication to actually make something you are willing to submit. So there's always going to be a lot less entries, uh, like submissions than there are people taking part. But regardless, uh, I submitted the game two days ago. It's on the website now. There's a two-week voting process and even past that you can still download games, you know, that they don't go locked after that. So you can go try out my game, I'll link it down below, and you can, you know, vote on it. It would help a lot if you voted on it. And then at the end of the two-week voting period, I'll put the game for, like, public for free on my GitHub page. I'm just going to wait till after the voting process. I know, like, people can't now take it and submit it in for themselves, but, you know, I just thought I'd wait till the two weeks are over, then I'll, you know, let you guys have a look through the code in the game. Just keep in mind, uh, most of these, like, good design principles that I uh, preach about in my videos uh, go down the drain when I... Um, you know, do a game jam thing because you're so limited on time. You don't have time to think and like smartly design things. You just do like, you know, spaghetti code and just get it all to work. So I wouldn't look through the project for um, examples of good code, but you know, you can look how I pieced it all together and stuff. And you know, I, mean, I had a lot of fun with it. So I hope you guys have fun playing it. Uh, it's quite infuriating uh, because it's purposely trying to screw you over, you know, at everything you do. It's, if you've ever played like Unfair Mario or like, it's one of those like, almost like impossible games where pretty much everything you do tries to kill you and then yeah I hope you have fun with it I don't want to spoil the game so you know go try it for yourselves it's free obviously um but yeah hope you have fun with that and of course the other thing I want to mention is that I need to give thanks to my patrons so thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Art Farrell, Buddha Ray, Remy Baldwin and Phil Baum if anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily the link is down below if not there are also links to my social media down below so you can go join my discord server follow on twitter uh, twitch and so on it's all there for you guys so any help would be greatly appreciated now let's get to the video okay so as always any code that i write in these videos will be uh, available on my github down below the solid project that i've got here is already on my github and then after this video i'll push the changes so you can access this and then in my next video we'll do the fifth solid one and kind of end that off there then after that we'll continue with the rpg series and you know be dotting in other videos uh, between those you know maybe doing some more design principle related videos or doing some other related other videos like unrelated doesn't really matter just going to continue with whatever feels right but regardless let's get into this so the interface segregation principle by definition on the wikipedia page states that no client should be forced to depend on the methods it does not use so here's the example that i've got and then we're going to obviously refactor it and code it better and smarter so Generally, you write interfaces when you are defining what a class has to have. You don't define what it does, like how it does it, just what it has to do. So, for example, I've got a function for dealing damage, right? So a character has to be able to handle dealing damage, or in that case, taking damage. But the interface doesn't define how you take damage, just, you know, here's the integer of damage to deal, and, you know, I don't want to return anything, it's void. But apart from that, you know, it's just kind of a definition. of An interface is like a definition. And obviously a character, you know, might have a name, health, max health, mana, max mana, speed, position, you know, it'll have tons of other stuff. But the point is, if a certain class wants to access a character, this this is the kind of stuff it'll have, right? Uh, deal damage, spend mana, move. In a real example, you wouldn't probably have a move function in an interface because, like, it's already built into the character controller or whatever, right? Uh, this is just an example, you know, it's fake code. It's, I can't actually really show you it working. I can show you it compiling and obviously how to redesign it. But I don't have, I find, I find it quite hard to come up with a you know, practical example for this, um, but you'll understand why in a minute. So obviously we have all these fields. Now what I've done is I've written a few classes. These are obviously fake classes that might interact with it. This is like the kind of real example. So we have the mover here. Now, you know, mover would be the player movement script and so on. So instead of I character, you'd probably just get the movement component, but regardless, um, I'm saying this mover class has a target, you know, the target you wish to move, just for example and you want to pass in how much to move. Now that would be normalized probably because you know, you'll know you have a speed, the movement's just meant to be a direction. And all we're going to say is, okay, we're going to store the iCharacter component, whatever component implements iCharacter on that target. But if it's null, so if the thing we, imagine like we're trying to say, hey, you move, but that thing might not be able to move. So if it can't move, then return. And then we say, yep, character.move because the character interface has a move function 
obviously we don't care how it moves. You know, technically, me calling move and passing an effect free could make it, you know, take damage based on the X from the movement. It, it doesn't matter. I don't care how it does its thing. Just, you know, I want you to be able to move or have a function called move, essentially. And then we log the position, but I'm not even going to be able to show that. The point is we interact with the movement part, okay? And then over here we have a damage dealer. This class, you know, says, all right, I want a target and a, an amount to deal. And then I will handle the function calls for actually handling that scenario, which is um, take the target and get its high character. If it's null return, if it's not, then deal damage and then log the health, right? Simple. And then we also have a mana spender. For example, this would be, you know, to do with like casting spells. So here we go. Imagine we had a spell to cast, you know, well, the transform, who is the caster and how much mana does it cost to cast a spell? We're just going to say, um, you know, var character equals cast target component a character. So we're going to store the same thing, just like we have in the other examples. And then if it's null re return, otherwise, uh, wait, I've clicked in the wrong class, sorry. Mana spender. Um, we call spend mana and we pass in the mana cost to spend and then we log the current mana. So this works, right? Most of these, I mean, all of these uh, principles work when they're not implemented, right? You don't have to use these principles to write code that actually works. But the problem is now, if we made a class, right? So if I go and I say, all right, in this folder, we add a class, we're gonna add a player one and an enemy, right? So if I said player, and then for the sake of this, I'm just gonna copy paste, and then I'll say enemy, all right, let me just do the quick boilerplate with the namespace. Okay, so here we've got the enemy class and we've got the player class. Now, these are both characters, right? So what you do is you'd write I um, character, right? And it's gonna tell you, oh, you need to implement all this stuff. Okay, boom. And obviously you would write all the logic and then, you know, same for the enemy, you know, they need to be able to do all that stuff as well. So the enemy is a, is a character. But obviously the whole point is the enemy implements these things differently. You know, maybe the way the enemy gets its own name is different to how the player gets it. Maybe the player just has a string and it's, you know, a field, whereas the enemy might have to go look up some, like, you know, database thing. I don't know, whatever. The point is they might get it differently. So here's where I would write the logic for getting all these things and returning all these values. Now, the main problem or the main thing this interface is meant to solve and do is, you notice this interface I character kind of has too much stuff. The whole point of the integration interface segregation is that uh, the client shouldn't be forced to depend on the methods it does not use. So let's say the player does use name, health, max health, mana, speed, position. But let's say for argument's sake, enemies don't use mana. Well, you know, okay, the enemies don't use mana. So let's say we don't need the mana fields and we don't need to be able to spend mana. But because it's an I character, it has to, right? Problem is anything that finds out that this is an I character expects that to be mana and spend mana and max mana. So you have to implement it, otherwise it's not gonna work. So you're kind of in a sticky situation there because you know, the bad way to do it, the way some people might do it, is just say, oh, well, we don't have mana, so just return zero when they ask for mana and return zero when they ask for max mana. And then when they say spend mana, just, just do nothing, right? Just empty function. But then now you've just got kind of garbage code, just like useless code, rubbish code, whatever. It's just kind of there doing nothing. And it's almost like lying to the thing. Because you can imagine, let's say you had a um, mana drain spell and you tried to use it and then... Um, it would successfully work on an enemy even though it had no mana when maybe it's not meant to. Or there's so many situations where you rely on the fact that this thing does handle the scenario, but all we're actually doing here is just doing nothing and nothing and nothing. So the whole point of this is we should split up our interface into multiple smaller interfaces that handle each separate part. So I don't mean having one field in every interface. Maybe a character has a name, right? There'll be other things that characters have to have. But characters don't have to have health. I mean, maybe they do, right? Let's say let's say a character has to have a name and health, but characters don't have to have mana. They do have to have speed and a position, because, I mean, yeah, I think that makes sense, right? But, for example, the mana part, that, that might be different. So, I, I mean, we could do it in a different file, but let's just do it in here, right? So, public interface, like, mana, I mana user, right? I mana user. Imagining I'm something that uses mana. So, I have mana and max mana, and I can have spend mana, right? Like so. And then we're going to say here, well, now that we've sorted that out, the player has I character and it's an I mana spender or user, sorry. And that works, right? And then the enemy is an I character. So it now doesn't actually have to use mana if it doesn't want to, because we've said, oh, the character thing doesn't actually use mana necessarily. Okay. But one cool thing is here, because we have the I character and I mana user. Maybe a mana user has to be a character. Maybe a, a mana user is an extension of character, right? 
to be a mana user, you have to be a character, let's say for example. So what you can actually do is you can inherit just like you would normal classes. You can say, um, I character, okay? And you don't have to write all those bits in there. Um, let me just, do, do, do. okay. So now when we go back to the player, we actually don't need I mana user anymore. Oh, sorry, no, we, we need I mana user, but we don't need character because I mana user is a character, so it's all there. Whereas the enemy that has I character doesn't have to implement mana, right? So, I mean, that's basically in terms of, you know, the principles of it is you want to split up your things. The actual inheritance thing I just showed, you know, isn't necessary. You could just have, uh, oh, what's going on here? Uh, okay, now that we've changed it, we have to obviously change our functions. So the mana thing, right? Now it doesn't want to get the I character. It wants to get the I mana user, right? Technically the mana spender shouldn't even know what a character is as such. It should just be like, oh, mana user, right? I want a mana user. So even in that case, you could put mana user if you wanted to, right? I could have just renamed that, but oh well. Now that's happy and everyone else is happy, right? But now the enemy doesn't have to implement the stuff that doesn't have to deal with it. And then if you were getting really picky, what you could do is you could put the movement bit into its own interface and then put the health bit into its own interface. So um, a character is a health user and a mana user kind of thing, right? But then obviously if the enemy isn't a mana user, then that wouldn't work. So it's all up to you to just jiggle it around, put it where you, you know, where it makes the most sense. So a good example of this, well, I guess it's kind of what I said here. In your game, you might want to deal damage to something. And originally you might say, oh yeah, characters take damage. So I'll put it in the character part. But then in reality, you might have things that aren't characters that take damage, like a, a crate or a box or something, right? So you would, in that, in whatever class the box has on it to be killed, you would put a damageable, I damageable component, which handles uh, health and take damage, right? That's what a damageable thing is. But, um, a character isn't necessarily that. Let's say you had a character that can't take damage. You could have the damageable stuff on it and just say, oh yeah, return. Like, oh, when, whenever we call deal damage to it, just return because we're not taking any damage. But it doesn't make sense to have uh, empty functions. That's kind of the point, right? You shouldn't have unused functions and unused variables. That's the whole point of how you um, refactor this is so that you don't have, you know, functions that are empty or getters that actually don't return anything. You need to only have what you use, right? That's the point. So yeah, I think it makes sense the enemy has all this stuff. But then yeah, for argument's sake, let's say the enemy um, you know, doesn't have a speed and position, right? Well, I wanna get rid of speed and position and move. The player has it, but the, but the enemy doesn't. Well, in that case, that's when I think it makes the most sense to put the speed and position into uh, another interface. So public interface, I movable. Is it like, I think it's spelled like that. So you'd obviously put move in there and you'd put position in there. Like so. And this is, to be honest, if I was gonna go this far, then I would just have mana user movable. They're both separate things completely. Uh, I'm just gonna put all these fields and stuff together. All right, so we've got a character is just all this. And then even there would go um, public interface, I damage. Uh, ball. Deal damage. Health. Max health. Like so. And uh, did I put speed down here? Nope. Alright, well if the movers have the speed. Right? So now a character, as far as we're concerned, is just a name. Damageable is all this. Mana uses this. Movable is this. Now, technically, if you were building a proper character in your game, what you would actually do is you would have different scripts on the player handling all these things, but this is how you would do it in code normally. So this would be a uh, I character, I damageable, I mana user, I movable. It might look a bit, you know, silly, but you can have as many as you want. I think there, there might be a limit, but not as far as I'm aware. Now all these functions satisfy all that. Whereas the enemy now just has to be an I character and an I damageable because he has health, but he doesn't have mana or moving and he's still happy with having those interfaces, right? So then if we go to the damage dealer, this will probably throw an error, yeah. I want the I damageable off it, right? So we'll then just replace this with damageable, like so. Now he's happy. So all he cares about is it, that the opponent's uh, damageable, that the target's damageable. The mover only cares, not that it's an I character, that's an I movable. And then we just call it movable, dot move or whatever. And then for the mana spender, it's an I mana user, I already changed that earlier, it's happy. 
So now all these external classes only care just about the slight little thing that it's concerned with. You know, the when accessing the I character, it shouldn't get be able to get its health because you might have characters that don't have health. I mean, you probably, you know, maybe in your game characters have to have health, so you might as well put health in the character bit, but it's really up to you. Um, okay, that's it for this video. I mean, that that's pretty much it. It's quite a simple uh, concept, to be honest. Just spread your code out, don't have it all stuck together, and, you know, use lots of interfaces all over the place. Um, I mean, just saying that sounds messy, but obviously you have to use them sensibly, like this, right? Uh, you know, you want to access something about something that uses mana. Well, why is why not have an I mana user, for example, or whatever? Right? It's up to you to implement this into your own game based on your own needs. But it is very good for writing clean code, and that's kind of the whole point of these principles. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you stick around for part five. Um, part five for the D is the dependency inversion principle. So one should depend upon abstractions, not concretions. Now, obviously, I'll explain what that means more in the next video, but that's to do with the whole thing about, it's like an interfaces in this video. You know, I shouldn't care about how you do something, just I care that you do it. So it's like, I care that you deal damage, not how you deal damage. That's kind of the principle, but obviously we'll get into examples and stuff next video. So uh, thanks for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Check out my social media down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, if it helps you a lot. Uh, comment down below, all yada yada. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.